we all know Linus Tech Tips. He recently made a video about the Holidays Buyer's Guide for PC builds. And I have to say that I disagree with almost every PC build that he put on his video. And today I'm going to be fixing these PCs and telling you why I think he made a bunch of mistakes while recommending these components. Now I have a lot of respect for Linus. He's the biggest tech YouTuber out there. So nothing but love, but I do disagree with these builds and that's why I'm making this video. Before starting, I want to say that you have my PC build playlist in the top right of the screen for every single budget in case you wanna buy a PC build right now. That said, let's start. The only PC build that I agree on is the $300 PC build. If you want something functional, then that PC build is going to be just fine for you. So we are going to start with the $500 one. So on the $500 one, he decided to go with something that's upgradable over time. But I personally think that even at 500 bucks, you want something that's going to be good for gaming right now. And there are a couple things that I don't like about this build. The first thing being the power supply. This is the Thermal Take Smart BX1, 750 watt, 80 plus bronze power supply. Of course, it's an overkill for this build and it's going to give you tons of upgradability. But this is a tier E power supply, meaning that you should avoid it at all costs. It's not good quality and you're going to be risking your components. So that's the first thing that I do not like about this PC build. And then the other things are going to be the SSD and the memory kit. Yes, I know the memory kit is going to look nice. It has some RGB. But I believe it's too expensive for a budget of 500 bucks and then you're spending $84 on a 1TB SSD where you won't notice a single difference for gaming even if you upgrade it and you put a new GPU on here between Gen 3 and Gen 4 there's no difference and you can get a much cheaper Gen 3 SSD however this Gen 4 SSD that he picked it's on discount and I think that it's a good price for a Gen 4 drive however for this price I wouldn't go with that I would go with something cheaper and then the case is not the prettiest I personally do not like this case but it's going to work just fine with this build. But anyway, I think that we can get much better performance for this price by going on the used market. And I know he mentioned it, so I'm not saying that he didn't say anything at all about the used market, but that is going to give you a much better performance for the price. And if you want to go for something brand new that performs good right now, I wouldn't go with integrated graphics. I would wait and save until you have more money and you can buy a dedicated GPU instead. So this is my build right here. I decided to go with the Ryzen 5 55 fan width. The 55 fan width has two extra cores, so it's going to be better for multitasking, streaming and content creation. Then for the motherboard, I stay with the same that Linus picked. I think that it's a really good motherboard for the price. Then for the memory kit, I went with the Olowai 16 gigs of RAM at 3600MHz CL18 memory for 45 bucks. And this is what I was saying. He picked two sticks at $40 each just because they look nice. And honestly, at this price point, you're looking for the best price to performance, not the prettiest PC. Then for the storage, I picked the Silicon Power A60 1TB of NVMe SSD. You can easily go with 500 gigs and save some money if you want, but 1TB is a much better option. Then for the graphics card, you can find the GTX 1660 Super and 1660 Ti for around 125 bucks all the way up to 140. So I put 135 on the price tag. Now, of course, you want to buy the one that has a lot of reviews and I found a lot of them with a bunch of reviews. So you can get a graphics card that's excellent for 1080p and you can also get something like the RX 5600 XT. But the ones that I saw for this price didn't have any reviews. That's why I picked the GTX 1660 Super. Then for the case, I picked the Salman S2 ATX mid tower case. This one has a front mesh panel and it's going to give you plenty of airflow for this type of build. And last but not least, I picked the Cooler Master G500 550 watt 80 plus cold power supply. This is a B tier rated power supply, so much better quality than the other one. Yes, it's not a 750 watt power supply, but at least you are not risking your components down the line. And 500 watts, it's plenty of wattage for this type of build. So let me know guys in the comment section what you think about the PC builds that I'm showing against the Lightnus Tech Tips builds because maybe I'm making mistakes as well, but I think that these are going to be much better. Just let me know what would you change about these builds. Now, next we have the $1,000 gaming PC build. And once again, there are a few things that I do not like about this system. The first thing being the 12400F and the C690 motherboard. Now, before you say anything, I know that he picked this 
for future upgradeability. But again, I have to say two things about this. The first one being that it's only for overclocking basically, because even if you put the i5 13600K down the line on this system, yes, it's going to be great for content creation, but you have the RX 6700 XT for the GPU and you want to go with an NVIDIA GPU if you're going to do content creation. This is just for overclocking and most people don't overclock their PCs. I personally don't and I wouldn't overclock it unless you are on extreme situations, which I highly doubt. So I would only recommend the 12400F and the C690 motherboard combination if you are going to do overclocking and if you're serious about it. And I'm not talking about right now, I'm talking about when you put a new CPU. That's why I think the B660 motherboard is a much better value for this type of build. However, I'm going to go with Ryzen. Once again, I know he mentioned going with Ryzen and saving some money. And I think that is the smart move here, especially if you want to go for the best price to performance right now. Maybe if you want upgradeability, then yes, go with the 12400F, but I wouldn't recommend going with the C690 motherboard. Then other problems that I found here is the memory kit once again. This time he didn't pick the same one. It's a bit cheaper, but it's still kind of overpriced and I believe we can do so much better. Then for the storage, I do not disagree with Gen 4 this time because just for 83 bucks, you can get a Gen 4 SSD and a faster Gen 3 SSD than the last one is going to be around $77. So just for a $5 difference, that is a good pick. Then the case, I'm not a big fan of this case and I would buy another one that I'm going to show you in a second. And the power supply, he picked a C tier rated power supply. I wouldn't go with a C tier rated when you have the RX 6700 XT and the i5 12400 F on your build. So we are going to change that in a second. So here we have my build just under a thousand dollars. It's a bit more expensive than the Linus one, but it is going to be worth the price difference. For the CPU, I decided to go with the 5600 X for 155 bucks. Now you can easily go with the 5600, almost the same performance and you save around $20. So keep that downgrade in mind. Then for the CPU cooler, I picked the ID Cooling SE 214XT. This one has RGB on it and it's going to be pretty good for that CPU, it's going to keep it quiet and cooled. Which by the way, this is a component that Linus didn't add to his build. I know the 12400F doesn't really need a CPU cooler, but this stock cooler from Intel is not going to be the best option. Then for the motherboard, I picked the Gigabyte B550M DS3H Micro ATX motherboard. This one has plenty of features for gaming and it's all that we are going to need at this price point. Then for the memory kit, I picked the Team Group T-Grade Expert 16GB of RAM 2x8 of course of DDR4 3200MHz CL16 memory. Great price and you can go with the Olo White that I mentioned before but I would be just on the budget and I wanted to be under a thousand bucks but feel free to go with that one instead of this one. Then for the storage I picked the one from Linus, this is a really good storage for the price. For the graphics card because we saved in a lot of components here, we are going with the 6750 XT instead of the 6700 XT which surprise surprise it's a bit better it's going to be around 7% faster i know it's not a huge difference but we're getting a gaming desktop that has better performance for around the same price so why not then for the case i picked the fantex eclipse g360a atx case i believe that this one is a much better case than the one that linus picked both in looks and airflow and then i added an extra case fan the arctic p12 silent for the exhaust fan which Linus didn't add any exhaust fan. I don't know why he didn't, but I believe that this Arctic fan will be more than enough. And then for the power supply, I picked the Asus Staff Gaming 750 Watt 80 Plus Bronze Power Supply just for 48 bucks. This is a B tier rated power supply, much better than the one that Linus picked, which is, like I said before, a C tier rated. So here you won't be risking your components once again. You can consider spending an extra 30 bucks and going with an 80 plus gold power supply, especially because electricity bills are more and more expensive with inflation, but I believe that this power supply is going to be enough for most people. Then for the $1500 build, I actually managed to go with a cheaper build and much better and I'm going to explain why. The first awful mistake that I see on this PC build from Linus is that he picked the Thermaltake Smart VX1 750W A plus prone power supply just like the first power supply that I mentioned. This is a terrible power supply especially at this price point do not risk your components like that and even though you can get away with 750 watts on this pc build i will go with 850 
just to be on the safe side. Then the case, I personally don't like this case. I don't like how it looks, so we are going to change it. And then the memory, once again, overpriced memory in my opinion, just because it looks nice. But if you want something that looks nice, then go for it. I won't blame you. Then we have the storage. He picked the 980 1TB of Gen 4 SSD. Guys, if you're going just for gaming, which this PC build is for gaming, because if you want something for content creation, like I mentioned before, go with an Nvidia GPU instead. But if you're going just for gaming, Gen 4 SSD is not going to make a difference, trust me. Of course, having a Gen 4 drive is going to be better for the future, but for 120 bucks, definitely do not buy it because you can save some money to dedicate for your performance instead, which is what we are going to do, especially because he went with the i5 12600K for $280 when you can get the 13600K for $300, jump one generation, and it's going to make a performance difference for gaming. So this is my build for $4 cheaper. I picked the i5 13600K just like I previously mentioned. This will be a jump in performance for both content creation and gaming just for a $20 difference. Then I changed the motherboard to the MSI Pro 3690A DDR4 motherboard because it has BIOS flashback, which you are going to need. Then for the memory kit, I picked the Team Group T-Force Delta RGB 16 gigs of RAM. This is $60, so you save money and you also get RGB. Then for the storage, I picked the Crucial P3 just like the other builds. This is a Gen 4 SSD, but the only reason on why I picked Gen 4, it's because it's only $5 more expensive than the fast Gen 3 drive. So for that price difference, then yes, go with Gen 4. But for a $40 difference, I'm not too sure about that. Then I kept the same 6900XT. And if you want to go for content creation, I would recommend going with the 3070 Ti at this price point. However, if you're going for gaming, definitely the 6900XT is your best option at this price point for 4K resolution. Then for the case, I picked once again the Fantex Eclipse G368, great case, great airflow, let's continue. With the last component, and this is really important, I picked the Superflower Digion GX Pro, 850 watt, 80 plus cold certified power supply. This is once again a BT ready power supply, and I highly recommend you spending an extra 20 bucks for the Fantex AMP power supply. That one is AT rated, so it's going to be better, and you're just spending 20 extra bucks. This is my personal opinion. I do recommend you upgrading for that. By the way, you will have all the PC builds and all of these components with upgraded components as well, like the Fantex AMP power supply down below in the video description. And with the last build, we have the $2,000 gaming PC build from Linus. And once again, I disagree with some of the components that he picked. The first thing being the CPU. Why would you put the 13600KF when the 13600K is actually cheaper and it's going to give you that extra iGPU? Now, maybe when he recorded this video, the 13600K was $320. That's why I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you picked the right components because that happens a lot to me where I pick an $800 PC build and then the price changes and everyone is saying, oh, this is $1,000 right now and it's not my fault. So I understand Linus here. However, just for a $10 difference, I think the 13600K would be the much better option, especially at this price point. Someone that has $2,000 to spend on a gaming PC wouldn't mind spending an extra 10 bucks for better content creation performance because it's not a huge price difference and it's something that is going to be good, especially if he already makes videos or maybe in the future he's going to do so. That's why that's my first issue with this PC. Then my second issue is once again the storage. He picked the Samsung 980 Pro 2TB of Gen 4 SSD. Yes, this is super fast, but most people won't notice a difference between drives, especially for gaming, there is literally no difference at all. And then he also put a 2TB hard drive here. I don't know, I wouldn't spend $50 on this hard drive. Yes, it's super cheap for 2TB, but it's something that you're really not going to use. And at the end of the day, you're spending those extra 50 bucks that you can save for performance. So here you have my build instead. I picked the 13600K, just like I said before, and then I went with 32 gigs of RAM instead of 16, which I know he's doing these PCs for gaming, but he didn't clarify any upgrades in case you wanted to do more multitasking for other programs. So that's what I'm here for as well. I'm going to tell you at this price point, I would like to see 32 gigs of RAM, even though for gaming it won't make a huge difference. But of course, there are some exceptions. In some games, you're going to notice a difference, but for most games, there is no difference at all. 
but this is more for streaming, multitasking, opening a bunch of programs. I think 32 gigs is going to be the sweet spot at this price point. I also picked another motherboard. I picked the Gigabyte T690 UD DDR4 motherboard. This one is much cheaper than the Linus one. And trust me, it is all that you're going to need for the i5 13600K even if you want to overclock it. Then for the storage, I picked the Kingston NB2, 2TB of Gen 4 SSD, and it's around a hundred dollars cheaper than the Gen 4 that Linus picked. Yes, of course, it's not as fast as the Linus one, but just like I keep mentioning throughout this video, you won't notice a single difference when it comes to gaming. And even for content creation, unless you're doing a really specific task, you won't notice it. Then for the GPU, I picked the RTX 3080 Ti 12 gig version. This one is a much better GPU than the 6950 XT. For gaming, both are the same, literally same performance. In some cases, the AMD GPU is going to be faster. In other cases, the Nvidia one. The 3080 Ti has the Nvidia features like ray tracing, DLSS, and much more importantly for my type of use, a better encoder for both streaming and content creation. Then for the case, once again, I picked the Fantex Eclipse G360A. This will be enough even for this type of field. You won't have any issues with thermals. And last but not least, I picked the Fantex AMP 850 Watt 80 Plus Gold Power Supply. Like I said before, this is 80 rated. You want to go with at least 850 watts to be on the safe side. Especially if you are going to overclock this build. And Linus picked the 13600 KF. I suppose he wants you to overclock this PC because I don't think he would have picked the 13600 KF and a C790 motherboard, which for me it's a totally overkill here. So, like I said at the beginning, let me know what you think about my builds compared to the Linus ones. Maybe I made some mistakes too, so I'm interested to see your feedback. And if you wanna buy a private PC at this price point, you'll have a whole list down below in the video description for different private PCs at different budgets, and you will have my best private PCs video for November in the top right of the screen. And if you got value out of this video, leave a like and subscribe, but most importantly, hit that bell button so you get notified when I upload this type of content, which I will upload a bunch of Black Friday deals. So make sure to stay tuned if you wanna see the best Black Friday deals of this 2022. Thank you guys for watching, thank you for your support, and I will see you on the next one.